Now that we've seen how to publish a report to the Power BI service, we're going to explore how to create an app workspace and what its purpose is. To understand the purpose of a workspace, let's compare and contrast my workspace, which is where we published our report in the last video, to the shared workspace, which is what we'll create in this video. Any user can publish a report to their workspace. Once published, this gives that specific user access to that report, but no one else. Think of my workspace as your desk. It's where all your files, documents, and reports are, but it's typically not where you would invite a bunch of colleagues over to when reviewing a report or sharing information with a manager. That's where the shared workspaces come in. Shared workspaces allow a similar process of publishing a report to them, the same way we published a report to my workspace in the last video. However, the biggest difference with shared workspaces is that you can add other members who can then log in and view interact with, or edit the published reports. This is what we want to create in this video. Workspaces can also contain more than just reports. They can also contain dashboards, which can only be created in the Power BI service. We'll cover these in a later video in this section. Workspaces can also contain Excel workbooks that, once published, can be used and consumed inside of the Power BI service, opening inside of Excel Online in your browser. You can also separately publish Power BI datasets, which is just the data model from a Power BI desktop file. These can be used to create multiple reports off of a single dataset. We won't be covering that in this course, but I encourage you to research this further if applicable online. All right, with these concepts in mind, let's get started. So if you take a look over at the left, you'll see that I am currently in my workspace, and I want to create a new workspace for this course. So I'm going to come up here to Workspaces, and as you can see, there is a list of workspaces already available if those have been shared with you on PowerBI.com from any other user, and you can even search for them as well. However, I want to create a new app workspace, so I will click the Create Workspace button, and then I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to name this workspace. So that's going to be called Learn Power BI for the name of this course, and you do have an option as well to add an image for the workspace group. I'm going to go ahead and leave that empty. And if you want as well, you can put a description in here if you need to, to inform people of what the purpose is for this. But I'm going to go ahead and hit save. And there we are. You can see that there is now a workspace over here called Learn Power BI. Now, if you wanted to add members to this workspace, you can come up here to the ellipses next to it, click that for more, and then select Workspace Access. And what that will do is pop up a list over here where you can add admins, members, or contributors. And you would type in the name of a person in here. And in this example, if I typed in this name, it shows up on the list from someone within my Active Directory on Exchange. And I can click them, and then I can choose to add them as a member, a contributor, or an admin. Now, the three settings for here determine how much access you want to give them. A member is someone who can read only. They have no ability to edit or interact with or do anything with the data. A contributor can publish reports and edit dashboards. And an admin has full access to do scheduled refreshes and everything else. And I'll provide a link in the comments, which will walk through in further detail the Microsoft documentation that talks about which each of these levels are. But for now, I'm not going to add anybody, so I'm just going to close this window. And I'm going to switch over to Power BI Desktop to republish that Learn Power BI report to this newly created workspace. So we have the same Power BI report as our previous videos. Come up to the Publish button again. I'm going to select that. And you'll now notice that I have a new destination to pick from, which is the Learn Power BI workspace I just created. So I'm going to select that and hit the select button. There we are. It's been successfully published. I'm going to go ahead and hit got it and then return to the Power BI website. And there we are. We can see that the report is now published. If you take a look on the left, I am in the Learn Power BI workspace and I have both the report and the data set located in here after I published it to this service. And it's really as easy as that. Creating a workspace is just a couple of steps. Create the workspace, add the members you want and assign their rules, and then publish the reports that are necessary to put into here. Now, as I mentioned, there's also other things you could add to a workspace. Again, taking a look at our left, we have the option of workbooks, which in this case, we're not going to cover in this course, but we will want to cover dashboards, what they do, how they function, and how they're different than reports. And that is what we will cover in our next video.